to go back to what's the content of our education. How do we have a debate about things that people know so little about? How do we have a debate about stuff that the, that the information in the policy, the information available to the current generation is half-truths and statements that are without context and full? Now, they both try to provide some context, history, information, basis, background, context, time, place, location of these things that are happening. And I think inside there's a richness of information that we all have to come back to fundamental issues about. I like the way... Um, uh, Professor Tumi rounds up the discussion about power without checks and balances and the involvement of the polity people in ensuring accountability for their leaders. Exactly, and he talks about the fact that we need an active citizenry in order to effect this change. But how do we even get to that point? Why are we not active, if that's the question? And how do we then get to that point of activity in the So I think for me, there are a number of bodies that need to come have a seat at the table. They talked about local government, state and federal. And all of us are at the local government and then the power of labor civil society political parties students and youth and the fact that at each of these levels our institutions need to become stronger our labor groups need to become stronger political parties they said do not exist they need to yes. become stronger because who is making the decision about the federalists nigeria we're not at the table we need to demand our seats at the table. I think that was one clear message that I heard today. The second one is hold your people accountable. Yes. Once you demand a seat at the table and you form strong groups, hold them accountable. Fight for that right to speak up. Now, I don't mean fighting with weapons. Mm -hmm. I mean fighting with intellectual mm -hmm. rigor. What Obinaya talked about, knowing who we are, what we stand for. Fighting with facts. And he used Lagos State as an example, a state that has fought at the judiciary for its right at the table and has won. That gives us hope that we can do it. Create federal systems that work for you, but also state systems and local government systems that work. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Taji, what do you have to say to this? Well, I think the two professors uh, created a balanced, um, if you like, discussion around um, federalism and restructuring. And for want of words, it's the first time that you probably appreciate the fact that this is not going to go away. It's something that both the government and even the citizens should embrace as an ongoing discussion um, in every tenor of administration, in every, um, whether gov this government is in or the other government is out. It's something that will, it's, it's, a, it's a continuous discussion that must, that must go on in terms of um, understanding how we must live as a people or how uh, the government must serve us, you know. Uh, the citizenry. And I think the last point there was really what Indy raised about, look, the political parties, the CSO, civil society organizations, you know, the agents of socialization here must really come together to, to play that active role, you know, in, in keeping the government in check. Certainly, and I think it was also good how it ties back to the place of education, yes. like you said. We don't even know, so how do we begin the change? It ties back to education. But we need to round up now, going quickly back to the next speaker the Honorable Minister of Trade and Investment, Dr. Okechukwu Enelema. Back to to the platform Nigeria. The platform is brought to you by Covenant Christian Center and we are live at the Covenant Place, Igomu, Lagos. Our next speaker is the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Okechuku Enelama. Prior to his ministerial appointment, he worked as the CEO of Africa Capital Alliance, ACA, an investment and financial advisory firm where, which he co-founded in 1998. ACA has now grown to be recognized as a leading private equity firm in West Africa. Mr. Enelama has 27 years of private sector experience spanning finance, consulting, auditing in Arthur Anderson and private equity. He holds a medic medical degree from University of Nigeria, Nsuka. Additionally, he has earned an MBA MBA from Harvard University in 1994, where he was also elected as a Baker Scholar 
and also named a Loeb Fellow. Please join me as we welcome to the platform Dr. Enelama. Thank you very much. I must say I'm very delighted to be here. I hope you can all hear me. First, let me just begin by appreciating and thanking the Covenant Christian Center and of course the visionary, Pastor Koju Oyamade, for the forward-looking vision that has birthed and nurtured this program for about a decade now. I'm a great believer in the power of consistency. My father used to say, a little thing is a little thing. But faithfulness in a little thing is a big thing. Now, when you do something this big and then you are consistent, the power of compound interest begins to kick in. So well done, Pastor Koju. <clears throat> the distinguished cast of speakers, the multiple viral moments shared enthusiastically by the digitally connected generation, of which I'm not very lucky to be a member, and its insistence on conversations that matter have made this an important cultural and social phenomenon for Nigeria. And I really want to thank you for inviting me on this stage to share a message on building the Nigeria of our dreams. In fact, I've titled my message, Wanted a New Generation or a New Tribe, to be more precise, to build the Nigeria of our dreams. Wanted a new tribe to build the Nigeria of our dreams. I also want to appreciate all the other speakers. In fact, when I saw the cast of speakers, I was um, both intrigued. They told me I should come later. I said, but I need to be in the audience. I need to listen. So after a while, I had to come, and I was permitted to come and join. And I must say, the speeches have been brilliant and inspiring. And I like, and thought-provoking, I might add as well. And let me say that what I would like to do is to add to the conversation wearing a couple of hats. First is that I, I like to accept responsibility, since I now have the privilege and honor of serving in the government, of speaking as somebody who has responsibility not only to lead, but to lead by example. Secondly, I would also like to speak from the point of view of somebody who has been part of this debate about how do you build a better Nigeria. It's something I believe in deeply, and I think it's possible, like the previous speakers have said. And I hope one can join it from a position of responsibility. The theme of today's event, putting together the jigsaw pieces that form Nigeria, reminds me of a story I read about a scientist and his nine-year-old nine son. The scientist was working on a difficult assignment and was approached by his nine-year-old son, determined to help him in his work. The scientist, who would rather not be interrupted, tried to ask his son to go somewhere else for a while. But when he saw that his son would not, he started looking for an activity to keep the child busy. He tore a page of the world map from a booklet, cut it into small pieces, and gave it to the child with a roll of duct tape. Do you like puzzles, he said. Take this dismantled world map and see if you can tape it together again. The scientist was confident that the child would take many days to assemble the map. But a few hours later, he had his son calling him, Dad, I'm done. I put everything back together. At first, he did not believe it. It is impossible at the age of nine to reconstruct a map of the world his son had never seen before. He thought. He put down his notes, went to his son, and was sure he was going to see a mess. To his surprise, the map was perfect and all the, piece, all the pieces were in place. How did you do that? The scientist asked his son. How did you put the world back together? Well, Dad, the boy said, I don't know the world, but when you tore the page from the magazine, I saw on the other side a picture of a man. When you gave me the world to fix, I tried but couldn't. Then I flipped all the pieces and started to fix the man. And when I fixed the man, I turned it over and saw the world had been fixed as well. This story 
may be apocryphal in the sense that it may not be reality. But it teaches vital.